This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. I am mobile and a back-end developer. I do this in my uh, own for my own applications. And I'm starting to release these small walkthroughs to show you how I implemented some cool features that I personally like or I feel it was a nice feature to have on, on my application. So I'm not going to make uh, recode everything, but just going to keep trying to give you a insight of how it's done, how you could possibly repeat it if you like to code or then you might just like my application. So today's <clears throat> topic will be this server doc. This is API tester application and in specific to be specific specific, <laughs> specific I'm gonna be talking how I implemented uploading files and uh, with progress indicator. So you can see in here I'll be sending a file into my back and there it went. I got the response. Now it's waiting time. Five second went and it's gonna repeat. And this is going to be running in an endless service or you can do a single shot if you just want to test like so. It will be gone and it's not going to repeat it again. But that's going to be working for post and put queries and then you can do anything else also with get and delete. Use JSON bodies but uh, that's about it. And the cool feature in this application, I want to tell you a little bit before we dig into the programming environment, is that this is actually going to be running in an endless service. You can just kill the app and uh, it's going to stick, stick in the background. Actually, it's a foreground service. And if there's going to be any errors, it's going to give you a notification as an alarm. And then you're going to know that, hey, I got to do something with my backend. Did I, did my code crash or did I lose connection or whatever? So that's going to be the topic to go through. So I'm going to stop this one. So what do I use in my daily development? I'm a, I use Kotlin because that's the, uh, Google's native solution to be used for Android. It's not Google's language, but uh, it's, uh, let, let's call it, it's the native Android language. So this is going to be the topic. You're going to see how I implemented the file upload with progress monitoring. And uh, we're going to be cycling in the endless service class quite a bit. And then I'm going to be showing you how to receive the file in the back end. This is going to be, this is the server side. So I have it running in my production server. Currently it's uh, in Hetzna cloud. So it's ready to receive any file I'm sending it to. And uh, I use Ktor framework in the back end because it's also a Kotlin environment with you can code it with Kotlin and it's a really good for me because I don't want to switch between languages my main task is to release applications for Android so it's uh, easy to work with the same environment and language in both ends so this is gonna be cool you're gonna be seeing how to respond how to uh, handle the file how to uh, Go through the multiform data, get the part data files from it, and uh, if you need to do any error responses, that's going to be critical also to let the user know that hey, something went wrong. So that's uh, the topic, and uh, I hope you like it. This is going to be my first video, probably going to be doing a lot more every time I release something new, but. Here we go. Okay, let's go through the coding part. So, like I told you, this is done within 
red, with a retro fit and OK HTTP. So, so it's a really good library for you to use. It, it just works. So before we can send anything, of course, we need to have the uh, API provider to set up our parameters, authorizations, the uh, root URL addresses and anything else that you pretty much can or should set up for your API queries and for whatever limitations or how you allow the access into your packet. That's pretty much those are the rules to uh, reach your packet. So, okay, I'm not going to dig into this too deep, but this is going to be necessary. That's the uh, API provider section for you to figure out. So, but here, that's going to be the part that we actually freely configure our post and put functions queries. So I can add my file in here, for instance. So the user was able to uh, assign his local file through here. So I know where it is. I just need to uh, assign it into this query. So in here you can see the file attachment. So I do have it now because the user has selected something to be sent. So I'm going to be creating an actual file. So this is through my file tool. So I'll get the file name. I of course have an ID so I can go into my cache, local cache of the phone where I have it stored and search for it. And then I'm going to return if I find that file. Otherwise I'll just return null because that's a failure, then I know I shouldn't continue any further with my queries. Now I have the file, good, okay. Then we're gonna need to, because this is gonna be a multi-form data query, it's gonna need to have data type, so I'm gonna need to get MIME type, I know it, I can query directly from the file or with get type, content resolver get type. So now I know the, know the MIME type. If I fail, I'll just tell it's unspecified. Hopefully that never happens, but uh, it could. That's why I have the uh, null check in here. Then we can finally get into the point that we can configure code our request body which is going to be the coolest part because this is the part that is going to allow us to visualize how it progresses, how the uh, upload progresses. So I didn't code this from my own head. I mean, something like this exists already. So I just had to find a resource. I used GitHub and uh, then I modified it to suit my solution as best as, as I could. So for this, I'll be linking you guys in to a GitHub. There's going to be this guy called Mosfic. And he has a generic solution example that you can use in your own application, study it. And it's public. I want to thank him. This gave me a, a, a punch in the butt that I needed to finish my progress indicator for the upload. So really good example. You can use this as you see fit. So then we go back into the code. So this is going to be the part where we actually code the request body and then we can listen how it progresses and then we can update our progress indicator within the app. So as I told you, we're going to need to have the media type. So I have my mind type, which I then transform into media type. That's how I get the content type. I had my cached local file. 
that I'm always able to access and share to the outside world. So it was assigned into this class. And then there's going to be this, I believe this is called Lambda function. So this is going to be updated as it progresses and we can listen it in the upper level class within my endless service. So you need to build these override functions to define the total length. So you know when it's done, when it's finished. So I have assigned the fine length in here. You're going to need to assign the content type to the override function. OK, I, I received it. I know the mime type of my file. And then you're going to need to modify the standard right to sync. And uh, in here, I'm using my file. And uh, I like to operate through input stream. So I am getting input stream. And then uh, through the buffer sync, I write it all into the uh, into the uh, buffer sync from the uh, input stream. So this should be pretty robust, even if the file size is going to be really big. So it shouldn't cause any uh, uh, out of memory errors. And the most important thing is to uh, have this inner class, which is like an object that keeps on uploading, uh, uh, updating the on upload progress. So we can calculate the percentage that it's how how it progresses. And uh, in here we can catch the lambda function. And uh, as it progresses, you're going to be seeing through this progress, how it's going. Okay, it's ready, it finished, my backend responded. Perfect. And uh, this is not going to finish until it's fully uploaded and we have the response. So it's going to, this part here is going to wait until the upload is ready and we actually have a response from the uh, backend server. So this is a post function. We have the content part in here. Then we need to build our multipartbody.part, which is going to have a generic upload file name. Then we're going to give the actual file name. So I know the actual name of it. It's going to be stored with the exact same name as I was handling in here. If it says pintaala.png in here, it's going to be saved with the exact name in the back end. That's important. I want to keep it the same. and. Uh, the, it's going to be .png or mp4 or whatever. So I know, know the uh, data format of the file and actual name. Good. And then the most important, it's going to have this core customized content part with the uh, progress indicator. And finally, when this has been done, the, uh, the content part through multi part body as a file part, we can send it into our backend through our retrofit post file. In, in this case, it has been configured to be a post function. So I'm checking the type, it's post or put, and select it as so. And then we're going to be sending it. And you're going to need to use these annotations in here. Of course, it's going to be post, and then it's going to be multi-part. And retrofit just handle it. Perfect. It, it, it knows what it does as long as you get these annotations correct. Then we're going to assign the uh, actual ur because it needs to have endpoint and of course the, uh, the root ur to know where you're sending it to. And then we're going to have the part, multi part, body the part. This is, the, uh, I think this is a really good way to actually send files and not just a generic data object of a JSON or something else. So that's the uh, interface part in here. And finally, this retrofit response when I, my back end is ready, has been fini finished, it's going to give the response. Whether it was a success or whether it was a failure or something else. So then I can handle it in here and 
get the status update into my application to the main activity of the uh, where the uh, all this front end coding has been done for the application so it's going to visualize all these parts in here and uh, then the response bam comes comes to display it was a success good so that's that's how i sourced the uh, progress indicator from github and again it was Masfik who initially did this i don't know if he did it by himself or he learned it from somewhere else but uh, i was happy to find this because i uh, was able to uh, modify it to suit my application perfectly i just used bits and pieces i didn't use this as a whole but that's the way you need to do it also for for your own application and uh, then we can jump into the back end code okay here you can see the actual server side code so this can like i told you this is in, done in ktor so you remember i was sending files through post query from my application and here i'm able to uh, catch my queries with through the post and uh, i have my root url but this is going to be the endpoint address so all these were configured through my application so you can reach any endpoint or root or address of your own so pretty much we get the id i check the authorization i don't want any random guys reaching to my endpoints so at least i'm using api keys that's the uh, that's the secret so we are okay we're passing through the authentication of api key continuing to check the actual file name so remember i was sending a file in here so i want to catch here i want to catch the actual file name so it was uh, bintala.png or something okay i'm getting it i'm preparing the uh variable for possible error messages and then we dig into the uh, multi-part data okay so call dot receive multi-part that's how you get access into the form data and then you need to uh, according to ktor framework you can go through a for each iteration so then you have to check if it's form item or file actual file item this is otherwise you won't get your access into the file unless going through this checking iteration so i don't do any stuff currently with the file description but i definitely need the file item so then i uh, get the file name original this is going to be sorry that was the file name really not using it but here I'm as getting the actual file name, original file name as string. That's going to give me the uh, actual physical file name, how it existed in my phone. So then I check if it's not null because I don't want to save anything into my backend if it really doesn't have identifier such as the actual file name. So if it's not existing, I'm just going to return a bad request. And a message that the file or file was null or empty so return here don't continue in the creating file which really cannot exist without a name so important in your back end of course you have to define a file structure so i have defined my own with a root folder that's gonna my server is gonna directly save it into uploads okay that's fine then there has to be id id has to exist also i am checking and returning if it if it doesn't exist because that id is going to be very user specific id is something that you define in here so that's the way i get to create another identifier for my root system also so 
I'm going to check if this already exists for this user or device. And if not, I'm going to make a dir. So that's the actual folder is going to be saving. Then we're going to create the actual file to write into. So again, I'm using the actual file name to make it correlate to the actual source from the phone. And uh, if the file doesn't yet exist, let's create the actual file into my server file system. And like I told you before, I'm working operating through input and output streams because this to me has proven to be the most robust way to handle any size of file. So definitely encourage you to comply this also. So then you can just write the uh, file part data through stream provider into the uh, in stream and then you can copy it into your file system. So the outstream is the new file within your server and then you get in stream from the part file data that you just received and copy it into outstream and then close in stream and close outstream. And when it's a success, you dispose the part data to not cause any uh, memory leakage and call respond success. File upload success to root folder and assign the ID that you just confirmed and the actual file name. And voila, that's how the user is going to also see it in his device. So we now it's finally time to make the uh, the last actual test to send the files and check the uh, root directories of my uploads within the server. So don't care about the timestamp. It's wrong in in my Android simulator. For some reason, it's not getting up my current finish time, which is correctly 1455. And uh, my server side is definitely in correct time but uh okay let's try send it refresh my root system and we should see that i was able to upload these two files so i go through post send it in here and i go through put send it we had have the response it's uh again simulator is showing wrong but we can we should see anything that 1455 timestamp also on the server side and let's update 14.55, perfect. So we have the Pinta PNG image. We have reunareanpitools.png. Don't ask me about the names. Some Finnish people might think about that, uh, what the heck he is doing, but these were two other random files only accessible to me through my simulator. So they are pretty funny if you think start to think what what they exist for but here that's all i have to share today uh, if you like my content applications go and try it out you can find them from my homepage holdtorun.com and uh, check it out and of course directly from google play i develop a release under the name of hold to run and in here you can see the uh, current ver version of server dog and few other applications i'll be making videos of in the future so these the latest version of the server dog with the uh, progress monitoring it's going to be released pretty soon so go and check it out wait for the upload updated version and retry thank you we'll be back